This video is sponsored by Grammarly. Picture this. You're two weeks out from starting university. You're young, excited, and feel like you've got the whole world ahead of you. Thing is, this whole starting uni business is very new and very unfamiliar. Many of your friends will be studying different degrees, and everyone's telling you that the days of being spoon-fed information are now over. You start reading up on your course curriculum, but all the acronyms and class codes just add to your confusion, and you're feeling a little bit overwhelmed. That's normal. I felt it, my friends felt it, and you too may feel it. Whether you're about to start university, returning for a new semester, or just looking for ways you can be more prepared and organized, you've come to the right place. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Sebastian, a medical student from Australia. And in this video, I'll be discussing how you can be more prepared for university or for college. I'll be sharing a bunch of tips about study, time management, socializing, and just general life lessons. I'm still a university student and I don't have it all figured out, but these are just a collection of tips that I wish I knew before starting my own university journey five years ago. And I hope they can help you to be more organized and productive to tackle this next chapter in your life. Choose classes that fascinate you. This is why you're studying in the first place. To learn something new, to equip you with skills that will help you with a future career, or to fuel a passion that will stick with you long after your university days are over. There's no point dedicating an entire semester into a topic that disinterests you, that doesn't inspire you. If you're enthusiastic about the work in the classes, you'll be more likely to research and learn more beyond the lecture materials. And you'll simply enjoy the process of learning. A lot of people might tell you that you need to do this certain subject or that certain subject because it's easier to do or it might get you better marks. And sometimes you might just have friends doing a certain subject and you wanna join them. While they all have their pros and their cons, I think at the end of the day, university is not just about getting a pass mark or getting good grades or getting the degree at the end of it. It's about attaining the skills that will help embody the person that you wanna become and the type of work that will give you meaning in the future. Scope out the course early on and plan your timetable. You wanna make sure that you're reading the course curriculum ahead of week one. It'll give you valuable information about your assessments, about the learning objectives and the content that you'll be learning each week. You'll also want to read up on the type of classes that you'll have to be attending and how many contact hours there are. One class might only have two lectures a week and another class might have two pracs, which are three hours each and they're mandatory. And so if you have other commitments like work, or hobbies. You want to make sure that your classes don't clash with these commitments and you want to make sure that your subjects don't clash with each other. A handy tip if you're feeling a little stuck is to reach out to your course coordinator and ask them if they have any options or suggestions about what you can do and sometimes you can rearrange classes or you can figure out a time that's better suitable for your schedule. And a little tip if you're looking to try get a free day or a day off it might be helpful to arrange all your compulsory and mandatory classes on the same day or same group of days because that will increase the chance of you getting a day off. Map your class locations. So this seems very obvious, but it's super helpful because I know for me on the first couple of days and weeks, some of my classes, I had no idea where they were. Um, I'd be looking for my tutorial room, or I'd be looking for the lecture room, I'd go to the wrong location, I'd have to ask people along the way for advice, and it was just confusing and it added to the stress of moving between this class and this class. And sometimes what you'll find is that you'll have one class which is on one side of campus, and the other class is just on the other side of campus and there might be a two kilometer walk between them. And if you've only got five minutes between the two periods, that's a lot of walking. So a helpful tip is to go into campus ahead of time to map out where your class locations are, where the buildings are. It'll just help remove any added stress when it comes to week one. Don't be afraid to talk to people on the first day. So everybody's in the same boat as you. Everybody's feeling a little bit nervous. They're experiencing a little bit of imposter syndrome and the whole situation and the whole environment's just a little bit unfamiliar. And I don't think it hurts to throw someone your best smile and say hello because I'll appreciate someone reaching out and maybe they'll form a familiar face and a future friendship. Because I know with my friend Declan who's been featured on the channel, I think on the first week or the second week of university in a biology class, he came up and sat down next to me and he said hi. And since then we just become friends. I think it's valuable to start getting to know people because you might be studying with them for the next six months, the next semester, or even the next couple of years if you're doing the same degree. And you never know what friendships or relationships might form out of that. Form accountability groups. It's a lot more memorable experience if you do university with friends rather than being alone. Because humans are social creatures and we need other people to share ideas and stories with. Having a group of friends to hold you accountable for your study, for your learning, for an upcoming assignment or a test that you've been neglecting, that's gonna be one of your most valuable assets. It'll give you an opportunity to teach someone else, to learn from someone else and to challenge each other. And it's important to remember that two brains always think better than one. Find efficient study tools and resources that work for you. 
You want to select them according to your learning style. If you're more an auditory learner, then audio-based content will be good for you. If you're more a visual learner like me, then video content will be more effective. Finding an efficient resource, whether it be an online website, a textbook, or a note-taking app, will save you time and improve your workflow. One app that can help save you time and effort is Grammarly, who is also the kind sponsor of today's video. Grammarly is a digital writing assistant that can help improve the vocabulary flow and clarity of your writing. It's really easy to use and you can install it as a browser extension or you can use it as a separate desktop application. There's a free version which covers all the basic writing corrections like spelling, grammar and punctuation. But with Grammarly Premium, you get more in-depth feedback about your writing's clarity, tone and readability. It even has a plagiarism checker to ensure that your text doesn't have any duplicate content and it checks passages that require citations. Grammarly is also super useful when it comes to writing assignments, reports and essays and taking a look at an essay I wrote a few weeks back, the first thing it's gonna do is gonna offer the goals of your writing. I want to sound quite knowledgeable, and this is an academic essay, so I'm gonna select academic, and I want the tone to be quite confident. Because it's a reflective piece, I want to be telling a story, so I'm gonna select tell a story for the intent. And so what Grammarly would do is give you a bunch of different suggestions. So looking at correctness, this will help me with grammar, so I might wanna change with the help from to of. It can also give clarity suggestions, so it's telling me that this sentence is a little bit wordy and it gives you vocabulary suggestions to change certain words to be more engaging and to improve on your overall delivery if you want it to sound more formal. If you want to give Grammarly a try and experience all the awesome features for yourself, then head over to grammarly.com slash Sebastian Peary to sign up and get 20% off Grammarly Premium today. Now back to the video. Don't neglect sleep hygiene. So it's super obvious, but it's super important and you need to get a good night rest if you're wanting to learn effectively. When coming out of holiday mode, it's almost like coming out of a nocturnal sleep schedule. And sometimes we need to fix that before we start university. If there's anything that I learned from reading Matthew Walker's book, Why We Sleep, it's that sleep is so important for memory consolidation, for freeing up mental energy and to help keeping you more focused for your tasks. Some people might only need five to six hours of sleep, others might need seven to eight, but as long as you're getting a good night's rest, you can say goodbye to the days of coffee and energy drinks because you're gonna wake up feeling more refreshed and more focused to tackle the day. Study when you're feeling most active. If you're a morning person, then study and work in the morning. If you're a night owl, then work in the evening. After experimenting with different study times and sleep times for myself, I found that I work most effectively in the late morning and in the early evening. And so I always make sure that I'm doing something in those times. There's no point trying to force yourself at your desk or in a library if you're just not switched on. Instead, it's better to have a rest, go do something else, spend time with your friends, work on a hobby or even have a nap and come back to it when you're feeling more focused and feeling more refreshed. Prepare your day the night before. If you're someone who likes to write a to-do list or a checklist of things that you want to be doing, then do that. Other people might want to just make a mental note of the tasks and classes that they have on the day, but whatever you're doing, it's important to make sure that you have a plan. Keep moving to your next task and that you're always taking action and so that you're not stopped wondering what you should be doing next. Design an effective filing and naming system. So this is something that people neglect. You'll get into a new semester or start your new classes and you'll be given a bunch of different notes. You'll be given a course outline, you'll be given the lecture notes per week, practical notes. They're just bombarding you with resources and bombarding you with information. And a big mistake that people make is they forget to label everything correctly. So in the time, in the short term, it's not a big issue. You can remember where you're getting this and that. You remember what's happening in the weeks. But when it comes to the end of semester exam and you're trying to find your notes from week two or week three, you don't know where you put them. You didn't label them or you didn't name them correctly. Even for me, sometimes I'll have to look at information from a year ago, from a year and a half ago, and I wouldn't be able to find them if I didn't organize my systems correctly and according to naming and dating schedule. And another thing is if you start arranging it in a hierarchical based system, it'll help structure your thinking because a lot of the time subjects are organized by certain categories and you can think of it as a knowledge tree. You have a subject, then you have topics branching off from that subject, which are usually arranged according to weeks or according to class dates. And then you'll have specific niche ideas, which you might want to explore from there. And so by filing, naming, and organizing your notes, you'll know where to get them, you won't forget about notes or lose notes, and you'll know what to expect when it comes to exam time. Create rewards for yourself. So inside our brain, there is an important reward pathway that's called the mesolimbic dopamine system. Whenever we do something that gives us pleasure, 
we release dopamine from the mesolimbic pathway to the nucleus accumbens. In simple terms, it helps to regulate our motivation and desire for rewarding stimuli. It also tells memory centers in our brain to take note of this experience so that we can repeat it in the future. If you set rewards for yourself, like having your favorite snack, going out to dinner with some friends, or taking part in your favorite hobby or sport, then you'll be more inclined to repeat that behavior to then study again and seek out another reward. This will help you form good study behaviors because you'll start looking at study as something that you don't put off or procrastinate but rather something that you want to work hard and make the most of because you know that you're gonna have something fun or something enjoyable planned when you're finished. My final tip is to shoot for the moon and even if you miss it, you'll land among the stars. And what I mean by this is that you want to consistently apply yourself, give it your role, reach out to people, engage in extracurricular activities and make the most of this opportunity that you're in. No matter what happens, if you bum an exam or you get a little bit lost along the way, you're still gonna learn a lot you're still gonna hit those stars. Learning is a marathon, not a sprint. It's not about racing towards the end of your three-year degree and finishing. It's about taking initiative and accountability for your learning and setting long-term targets for yourself. Yes, you may forget all the principles of linear algebra, but the overall skills of professional development, of communication skills, of knowing how to research things, these are all gonna stick with you long after your degree has been finished. Just by being here in university or college, you're in a very privileged and lucky position. Not many people get the chance for tertiary education. And I think you wanna make the most of this time because it will be short-lived, it goes pretty quickly. I'm in my sixth year of university overall and the first five years just flew. And so yes, you will have stressful times. Yes, the workload will pile up and you might have other commitments and family things going on. And just remember that the end result is not about getting the best grades or obtaining the piece of paper that you graduate with. It's about the skills that you acquired, the knowledge that you learned, the friendships and networks that you built, and the memories that you made. Well, that's gonna wrap up all the tips that I have for you today. I hope it can give you a perspective and a flavor for what's to come in university and how to make the most of the short amount of time that you'll be there for. If you enjoyed the video, remember to hit that like button and to subscribe to see more content like this. I made a custom playlist of all my videos about study and productivity tips, which I hope you'll find valuable, and also some of the things that I get up to in medical school. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, this was Sebastian, stay sharp.